this video I'm going to explain why when you convert alternating current to direct current the resulting voltage is approximately 1.4 times higher than the alternating current which you converted. In this video I'll be using my Velman HP50 scope, a bridge rectifier, a 200 volt 100 microfarad capacitor, and a 1N4007 diode. I had a couple of people email me questioning why when you convert alternating current to direct current that the resulting voltage comes out 1.4 times higher and in this video I'm going to show you exactly why. Since we will be using a high voltage the probe will be set at times 10 with the switch and the meter itself I'll push the times 10 button and make sure it's on alternating current and I'll also set it for the 100 volt per division. I have a 200 milliamp fuse right here in line with the power supply in case there's any accidental shorting. What I'm going to do now is connect up the probe to the incoming alternating current, 120 volts, and this gets connected to the neutral. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a better close-up on the scope. Okay, so we have a, right now we're not connected, we got a flat line. This little dark blue mark on the voltage scale going up and down, that, that will be the middle of the waveform when it comes on. And the bottom scale is the time. Right now set for 5 milliseconds. Each one of these little increments is 5 milliseconds. I'm now going to apply 120 volt power. Okay, you can see there's a nice waveform now. You can see a nice sine wave. Right here shows 125.3 volts. Now I'm going to add a line in here, a marker. Now you're going to ignore this voltage reading down here because what this is, what this is telling you from the bottom up, it's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 change. That's why it's 507. I'm just going to show you as a reference the middle of the waveform. So let me move it down here. So now we see the zero volt horizontal line. Each peak that goes up is a positive peak. So you got a positive peak there, positive peak here, and then down here below the line is a negative. So these are all negatives. All right, so if I want to see what the frequency is, so the frequency is going to be measured at the beginning of the waveform which would be right here. The negative is coming back up and then at this point at the zero line it wants to go positive. So the first marker I would put on that line, so I'll move that to the, you can see the marker over here moving over. Keep moving all the way over. I'm going to stop that marker right here this marker right here is going to stop on the beginning of that right around there and now I'm going to take the second marker and move that to the end of the waveform so this is the whole cycle right here one up coming back down and back up now if I go into a different screen I should have around 60 here we go I'm pretty close 58.8 Hertz. This voltage, like I said, ignore that. That's measuring from the bottom to that reference line I showed you. I could hit the XY axis and I could bring this whole waveform down to the bottom line and then you get a, a different reading, but I just wanted to have a reference line there. So I got 58 Hertz. So now we're back to the screen. This is the whole cycle. Even though the scope is showing 125 volts, it's only an average and there's two types of meters out there for measuring you just have a regular voltage meter that takes an average which gives you around 0.63 or 0.64 of the peak voltage and then there's a RMS which gives you around 0.71 of this peak voltage now this is around 165 to 170 volts positive at the peak and the negative peak goes down about 165 to 170. 
I can zoom in a little bit. You can see it's showing 356.6 volts. And that's measuring from the lower peak, negative, to the upper positive peak. So the distance from there to there, 359.6 volts spread. Okay, and what I'm doing now is I'm moving the waveform down towards the bottom to give you a better readout of what's going on before I do it. All right, so what I did is I moved the waveform down to the bottom line now, so it's you could get the so now you can see the voltage of the whole waveform. If you measure from the lowest peak negative to the highest peak positive, a voltage of around 352. Now if you measure from the center of the waveform, which I'm going to do now, I'm going to lower the marker. All right, so you can see right now from the zero line up, we got roughly 170 volts, and from the zero line down, a little over 170 volts. Now this waveform, which measures around 120, 125 volts on a DMM, as you can see, it's 172 volts to the peak. Now when you're measuring pure DC, like a battery, you're going to have one straight line. There's not going to be any waveform, and that voltage is what it is. If you check it on the scope or you check it on your DMM, it's going to come out the same. What I'm going to do now is take this 1N407 and show you how if you connect it this way with the hot on this side, it only allows the positive peaks to come out. And if you hook it up in reverse, let the hot line flow into the this end of the diode, it will only allow the negatives to come out. What I'm going to do now is switch off the power for a minute, install the diode in place, and take a look at the scope reading. And here we go. Okay, now this is with the diode in position with the hot AC line coming in at 120 volts. As you can see, you now effectively blocked all the negative parts of the waveform. And you're only getting the 172 volt peaks of the upper part of the waveform. Now I'm going to remove the power and install the diode in the opposite direction and you will see that only the negative parts of the waveform will be here and all of the positives will be blocked. As you can see the diode now is only allowing the negative part of the waveform to show up and it's blocking out the positive part. Now when you use a full wave bridge rectifier what's going to happen every single one of these negative peaks will be converted into a positive peak. So right up here where this flat line is there's a peak that's a positive and the space between the two will become another positive peak. I'm going to show you that right now. So this is with the full wave bridge rectifier installed. All the lower parts of the waveform, the negatives, have been converted to positives. So now we have a whole bunch of positive peaks with a lot of ripple in it. All these little hills and valleys are ripples. If you were to measure this with a DC setting on your DMM, you would end up getting the same voltage or very close to it of what the AC voltage was, which was around 125 volts. Now, in order to use this, you don't want to have all this alternating current voltage, this AC ripple in there if you're going to be powering DC devices. You want, to, you, want to, you want this as smooth as possible. So right now it's averaging to give you a DC reading of 125 volts if you check it. But what's going to happen, the very top of each one of these peaks is right around 170 just like it was before with the AC waveform. I'm going to use a capacitor now and what the capacitor is going to do, you see every time it hits a peak, it falls down and it goes up again, it falls down. So what's going to happen now when you use a capacitor, as the voltage, as it's spiking upward, the capacitor is charging to that 170 volts. As soon as it tries to drop down, it's not going to drop down fast anymore like that. What's going to happen, it's going to gradually slope down, very, very slight you won't have these drops like this because the capacitor needs time to discharge so 
the capacitor is acting is acting like a shock absorber for all of these spikes because it takes time for the capacitor to charge and discharge now the bigger the value you use the smoother the result will be around that 170 volt line you'll never get it perfectly flat like a battery but you can get it close to it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a capacitor to the circuit and you're going to see all of these peaks that drop down towards the zero line they're going to be gone because the capacitor is going to prevent all these drops it's going to keep the voltage up towards the top okay before you had all the positive peaks now you can see all those peaks are gone because every time it reaches a peak the capacitor is charged up and then every time it tries to drop the capacitor slowly discharges so as a result of the capacitor you have a nice straight line right at 172 volts this is why you end up with 1.4 times the input AC voltage is because all those positive peaks the tops becomes your DC flat line and that's at 172 if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, rate it a thumbs up, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you.